Hey guys and welcome back to another session on dynamic programming. We are continuing today on DPV 6.24, the space complexity of edit distance problem. Just a quick recap. In the last episode, we covered what the um, edit distance problem was and the basic algorithm using dynamic programming is to compute the, uh, uh, the score for minimum uh, cost traversal and this score uh, will basically be computed all the way across this uh, matrix and the score at this bottom here represents the best path of reaching this final point and this is the final score. Now based on this final score we were able to backtrack and find how we arrived what was the path of arriving at this point through this uh, matrix and that's how uh, we arrived at the path using the basic algorithm. And, but the point is that this algorithm requires order m n space and order m n time. So um, the problem with it obviously is that order m n space could be very large when you have um, gene sequences involved. And so how do we solve that problem? And so for that, one of the algorithms that the book mentions, or it kind of details it a little bit, is the Dan Hirschberg algorithm. And uh, this is the algorithm that provides a better space complexity with matching time complexity than the other algorithm, which is, um, I think referred to as Needleman Wunsch algorithm, which is the basic uh, dynamic programming algorithm with order MN complexity of time and space. Dan Hirschberg algorithm is actually um, order N space and order M in time. So let's look at the uh, Hirschberg algorithm. In the Hirschberg algorithm, the difference is that um, instead of computing this backtrack um, and taking up this whole space, what we do is that we just compute this middle column. And this middle column <clears throat> is, let's say this, this axis on the X has size M. So we take this column to be column M by two. And once you're on this m by 2th column, we have to find where the, the arrow path intersects with this uh, m by 2th column. And we don't know that. So the way we arrive at this solution is that we do two, um, two score matrices. One from the beginning, from the prefix side or this, the original side. And one, we can start the same process, but instead of starting from this end, we will start from this end. Or the tail end of uh, these two words. So if you run these algorithms, um, the scoring algorithms, in the first episode we showed that the space complexity of running the score itself is just order n. And so what you do is you compute the score from the head end and with the tail end, and then you compute it for this column. So once you have both sides score, you sum them up, and that gives you the complexity or the cost of a path beginning here and ending here but passing through any given point on this um, on this column so once you have that cost you pick the minimum cost and that will give you the the point at which this arrow path crosses this column now once you have that the next step is to break the original problem into two smaller problems so this is a divide conquer strategy and that's the Hirschberg algorithm. So the way divide and conquer works is that once you know this k, this is the kth row. So once you know the kth row, you take this um, this left side box and you find the arrow path that is contained inside this that starts here and ends up on that kth element. So this is the one side problem. The other is that you start with this k and you end up on the last element. So this, these two problems, once you find the solutions to these, you can sum them up and find the total solution to the problem. Um, just to quickly summarize, the first thing you did was took the middle column and then you found the best element, the kth element, where this arrow path will intersect it by running a, um, a cost matrix from the left side and a cost matrix from the right side. 
Once you have those, you sum both of those costs, find the best element here, and then you break from using that best element, you break it into two sub matrices, which are smaller in size. And, um, and then once you have these, and these matrices should be half in size to the original problem. So once you have this half matrix, um, then what you can do is then you compute on the left side, you compute on the right side, and you join them together, and that gives you the total path. Now, keep in mind that the reason this path works is because from any given point, you can either go right, you can go diagonal, or you can go down. That's why we, we know that this path is contained in this left square or, or left uh, rectangle. And the right path is contained within this right rectangle. It cannot escape this because from this point, it can only go here, here, or here. So it's contained within this. And that's the reason why this divide and conquer strategy actually works. And it reduces this... Um, this uh, problem to half the size at every step and eventually solves the problem. Now, the we have now proven that in order n space, we can solve this problem, right? Because we didn't have to store this whole matrix. All we did was to store this, this middle column cost. And we computed this using the previous episode's algorithm by only storing two columns. So that part is clear. The space complexity is order n. But why is time complexity of this problem um, order M in? So to understand that, let's start with the original assumption that there is a time complexity of this problem with T M comma N. And we know that the initial part of computing the scoring matrix for the middle column was some function of C M N, right? Because that's, um, that's C M N. Um, but it left two problems, T, m by 2 comma k where this was the kth element kth row here and then tm by 2 n minus k which was this other problem right so you're left with two problems now how do we break this down so again we we apply the same equation to these elements and you get those elements out from this and then remaining four problems um, are achieved and we assume some other k prime is the next um, critical element and then k double prime is the element for this so there's some 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 k here in the middle and some k prime here in the middle <clears throat> for the next problems now what this uh, converges to is that this is some cmn and let's say this is some cmn by two if you add these two elements you end up with this but you are left with four problems now at this step and the, they are uh, four times tm by four and some function of n now you see that n is decreasing so worst case this is n but these are smaller than n. So this problem is kind of converging down um, because every time this, this k is, you know, if the k is even one, then, then this second number is less than n. So we have said some, some function of n, but it, worst case, it could be n. Um, you know, it's not really a function. It's, it's really less than n. n minus some constant is this value. Now, at the third step, this would become eight problems of m over eight. So as this converges down, eventually this function would become order, you know, one or two. And once you reach that, this whole thing converges to worst case order n. But um, this, uh, this number of problems remaining at that point is, um, is two to the power of log m. Because at log m, this would reduce down to one. So two to the power log m is m. So then this converges to um, order mn, right? So this is order mn, and this is already converged to order mn. So the overall complexity of this is order mn. So um, hence, we we know that the Hirschberg algorithm meets the criteria for the solution. It is order n space and order mn time complexity, and therefore we have solved this problem as desired. And hopefully you understood this uh, solution. And if you did, uh, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to continue to see more dynamic programming solutions. And um, I hope to see you in another episode. Until then, take care and bye-bye.